Hello everyone, in this video I will discuss introduction to functions and uh, basic um, concepts about domain and range of functions. So let's begin. Let's start with the definition of function. In math, it is an expression, rule, or law that defines a relationship between two variables. One is what we call the independent variable and the other is what we call the dependent variable. Um, this relationship is commonly symbolized as y equals f of x, or our f of x is the y. I mean, other abbreviated symbols such as um, g of x, p of x are often used to represent functions of the independent variable x, especially when the nature of the function is unknown or unspecified. Let me give you a real-life example of function. So let's say you're working and your, your salary it depends on the number of hours you work. Say you work an hour, you earn $10, you work for two hours, you earn $20, and so on and so forth. So this time, or the hours, these are what we call the independent variable. And then the salary is the dependent. So your salary depends on the hour, uh, the number of hours that you work, okay? Now, we have to remember that all functions are relations, but not all relations are functions. So the question is, how will we know if something is a function or not? Let's begin with um, uh, if the given is a graph. So we will use a vertical line test. So what is that? Given these four um, graphs, how will we know which among these is or are functions using the vertical line test? So using a vertical line test, we just need to draw a vertical line. And if the intersection of that vertical line and the graph is one, exactly one only, that means it's a function like in letter A. In letter V, in letter B rather, if you draw a vertical line, I know it's not vertical, but assuming that's a vertical line, if that line intersects two or more points on the graph, that means it's not a function. For letter C, if we draw a vertical line, there will, there will only be one point of intersection, therefore it's a function. For letter D, it's not a function because there will be, uh, or there is a uh, two point of intersection, okay? Um, what if we have um, a set of ordered pairs? How will we know if it's a function or not? So let's consider A. Um, now in this case, all we need to do is to look at the x-coordinates. Okay. If there are x-coordinates that appear more than once, that means it's not a function. So here, we're looking at two twos. That means A is not a function. For letter B, we can see that we have here, right, an 8 and another 8. So that means it's not a function. For letter C, we have 5, 5, and another 5. So therefore, letter C is, is not a function. How about letter D? So look at all the x-coordinates. Again, your concern are the x-coordinates only. Look at the x-coordinates. They are all different. Therefore, we will consider letter D as a function. Okay, what if we're talking about um, equations like here? Now, if we are looking for equations, all we need to, look, to do is to look at the uh, variable y. Okay, so if the exponent of the y is odd, that means it's a function. So letter a is a um, letter a is a function because the exponent of y there is odd, and the exponent of y in letter d is odd. Um, here we have y raised to four. That's even, so it's not a function, and. Uh, Letter B also, this is also not a function. Okay, so uh, what is a domain of a function? 
The domain of a function is the complete set of possible values of the independent variable x. So the domain is the set of all possible x values which will make the function work. On the other hand, range is um, the complete set of all possible resulting values of the dependent variable y. The range is the resulting va y values we get after we substitute uh, all the possible x values. So let's try to um, identify in real life setting which one is the independent and the independent variable. And by the way, when we talk about the domain, that's the independent variable. And we talk about the range, that's the dependent variable. So dependent, range, domain, independent. Okay, please take note of that. You're doing chores to earn your allowance. For each chore you do, you earn $3. So what is uh, independent and the dependent variable? What are the variables? Which variable you have control over? So to answer these questions, um, we can say that <clears throat> the chores that you do, okay, okay, that's your independent variable. Okay, for each chore that you do, you earn how much? three dollars so earning three dollars is the uh, dependent variable okay you can control so which variable you have control over by uh, the ones that uh, you the chores right that you will do let's have another example you are buying boxes of cookies at, at a bakery each box of cookies cost four dollars so what is the independent and the dependent variable what are the variables which variable you have control over so basically you can control the number of boxes of cookies that you will buy that is our independent variable and the amount of that cookies is four dollars that's our independent variable Let's have another example. Your grandma always has a jar of cookies on her counter. One day, one day while you are visiting, you eat five cookies from the jar. In the equation below, C in the equation below, C is the number of cookies remaining in the jar, and B is the number of cookies in the jar before you visit. So C is equal to B minus five. So between C and B, which one is our independent and which one our which one is our dependent variable so here okay b is our independent right and whatever the value of that b will result to the value of your c so your c is your dependent variable okay cell phone usage before bedtime and sleep what is the independent and what is the dependent? What are the variables? Which variable you have control over? So basically the cell phone usage is our independent. And the, the bedtime or the sleep, the number of hours you sleep is the, the dependent, right? Next, the time you spent jogging and the distance you covered. So when we talk about time, that's independent. And the distance you covered, that's the dependent. Okay? Okay, so determine if the following relations are functions. Then state the domain and range. Okay, this one. Is this a function or not? We have 1, negative 2, negative 1, and 1. So we have two ones, therefore this is not a function. The domain are the x values, therefore we're talking about 1, negative 2, negative 1, and 1. The range are the y values, they are negative 2, 0, 2, and 3. Let's have another example. Is this a function? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, they are all different. So this is a function. Therefore, our domain are 1, 
two, three, four, and five. Our range are the y values. They are one, two, five, ten, and fifteen. Okay. So x values are our domain, and then the y values are our range. What about if we have um, coordinates? Okay, what is the relation? So basically, the relation is just the set of the coordinates of these uh, points in the Cartesian brain. We're talking about, so let's say, negative 2, 2. Sorry. It should not be like that. It should be like this. So B is negative 1, 1. Our C is 1, 1. Our D is 1, 0. Our E is 3, 3. And our F is 3, negative 2. Right? So negative 2, 2. Negative 1, 1. 1, 1, 1, 0, um, 3, 3, and 3, negative 2. The domain. So what's the domain? We have negative 2, negative 1, 1, 1, 3, and 3. And the range, we have negative 2, 1, uh, 1, 0, 3, and negative 2. Is this a function? So just look at the domain. If there's a, a number there that appears more than once, it's not a function. So it's not a function because we can see two ones here. Okay. Let's go for this one. Relation. We have um, negative 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, negative 1, and... 3, negative 2. Okay, so domain. What about the domain? We have negative 2, 0, 2, and 3. Our range are 3, 1, negative 1, and negative 2. Is this, a domain? Is this a function? Definitely, because there's no x value that appears more than once in the domain. Now, what about if we are looking for... Uh, a graph or we are uh, yes we're looking for a graph or the given is a graph how will we know the domain and range of uh, the graphs so just first we need to learn the symbols um, number one this means from negative one to five that means that the domain goes from negative one to 4.999 so that means the five is not included okay so for number two here we have from negative one to five union of five to 10 that means that the domain goes from negative 1 to 10 inclusive but there is a gap on the domain at 5 okay so here means negative infinity to positive infinity okay so once you see like arrow or if there's no arrow you're going to use um, brackets that means it goes infinitely in in that direction and then uh, we have if, if it's like an unshaded circle, an open circle, then you will use still a parenthesis. If it's a closed circle or shaded circle, then we will use brackets. Now, some graphs will have a combination of parentheses and brackets. Okay. So here, what's the domain? So to look for the domain, you just need to look at the graph in relation to the x-axis. So the left side of the graph is going... To negative infinity right so it's, we start with negative infinity and the right side of the graph you extend that to positive infinity so therefore the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity there's no limit when it comes to the range you need to look at the graph in relation to y so the the left side of the graph is going also to negative infinity and then the right side of the graph is also going to positive infinity in relation to y okay so here you don't see arrow how are we going to find the domain here so if you look at the re left side of the graph you can see that there's like a, uh it will start with negative five right see so that's negative five 
we will use bracket because of the um, unshaded or sorry the shaded circle and then going to the right side of the graph you see here we have three right but it's unshaded or open circle so we will use bracket okay when we talked about the range you look at the graph in relation to the y okay so here we have that's negative one we we'll start with negative one and of course, we will use a bracket going up because we're looking at the y that's positive 2 and we will use parenthesis. Okay, 2 is not included in the range. Okay, what about this one? This is an example of an absolute value function. You see there are no arrows on left and right, so we will assume that they are arrows. So what's the domain? Look at the left side of the graph. We'll start there. It goes to negative infinity. The right side of the graph goes where? Positive infinity in relation to the x-axis. Now you look at the range, uh, you're going, you need to look at first the, the, the down, the, the negative y-axis part going up. So going down, or sorry, at the bottom, you can see that we start with negative 5, right? That's negative 5 going up. To positive infinity there's no restriction okay let's go to the next graph here is an example of I think this is a sine function um, again for the domain look at the left side of the graph it's going to infinity you look at the right side of the graph it's going where positive infinity now for the range you need to look at the y-axis or the graph in relation to the y-axis so we can see that negative 2 is not part of it. Negative 1 is part of the graph. So, And we will use a bracket. We start with negative 1 up to positive 1. Right there. Okay. Let's go to the last example here. Is Oh, sorry. This is an example of a parabola, the graph of a quadratic function. So for the domain, look at the left side of the graph. It goes to, in relation to the x-axis, it goes to negative infinity. And the right side is also going to positive infinity. For the range, you need to look at the, the lower part of the graph because we're looking at the y-axis. And it started with negative 3, right, going up to positive infinity. Okay, It can be inverted. So if it's inverted, if the graph is inverted, like inverted U, you're going to start with negative infinity until the uh, uh, the Y coordinate of the, the vertex. Okay? That's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something.